we've been in a relatively peaceful time uh, since the end of the Cold War. But to assume that this will continue indefinitely would be to ignore the lessons of history. Another obvious lesson of history, which has been true throughout the centuries, is that if you want peace, prepare for war. And vice versa. If you want war, act like it'll never come. Allow your defense capability to atrophy. For an enormous island that is thinly populated in relative terms, compared with Asia, that has a vast store of natural resources, for such an island to be ill-defended seems like the most spectacular historical folly. In particular, when it is in relatively close proximity to a one-party state with obviously imperial ambitions, it's quite a long way away from its principal ally. That China has imperial ambitions is obvious. The more Chinese leaders in their speeches say, oh, China never does conquest, the more I'm like, seriously? Are you really going to make that argument? I mean, the Qing Empire was taking great chunks of Russia just over a century ago. So let's get real here. This is not a good situation. It was OK during the Chimerican era when the Chinese were like, OK, it's no problem. We'll just sell you stuff cheaply and underpay our workers and lend you money. It's cool. We'll buy Australian stuff, not a problem. Market price, how much do you want? That was all fine. But anybody who thought that that was going to last indefinitely was dreaming because the whole point of Chimerica was that it was a temporary, illusory relationship and that at some point China wouldn't need it anymore. And the Chinese are kind of getting to the point where they don't need it anymore. And the bets that we placed from the Clinton era that they would liberalize or that the internet would somehow turn them into a democracy, all that's gone. China's actually gone in the opposite direction politically. Xi Jinping has increased the central control of the party, is reimposing doctrinal orthodoxy, is cutting out such free speech as had developed uh, in China's public square. I mean, how many more flashing red lights do you need? So I think this is kind of getting to the point of urgent. And what I see in Australian politics is a debate that if it was going on in a regional council in Scotland would seem parochial. The parochialism is stunning. True, a considerable effort's been made by the intelligence and national security community in this country to waken people up to the potential threat that Australia faces. But is, is Australia in any way prepared, from a naval point of view, for a Chinese act of aggression? No way. So I think this is a moment of truth, actually. I said yesterday that we were entering a new Cold War and we should stop pretending otherwise. That's right. And this Cold War will be very different from the last Cold War. It will be fought in different ways. It will be a, an arms race for everything from artificial intelligence to quantum computing, more than for nuclear weapons or rockets to the moon. And the battlefields will be different. When you consider what China's Belt and Road Initiative has become, it is nothing less than Weltpolitik, than a global policy. It's far extended beyond the original concept that was essentially a Central Asian Indian Ocean concept, and it's become global. And the search for commodities is not a trivial part of what is involved. Empires some level are about acquiring commodities at below market prices. That's kind of what empires are. Or at least not trusting to the market to deliver you the commodities so it's better to own the real estate and own the mines, control the supply chain and not be at the mercy of the market or the mercy of a navy, which China currently is, the US Navy. So we need to clearly understand the historical logic of China's expansion. To have security, China cannot be dependent on imported commodities and market prices. 
when you think about what that implies for Australia, it's really quite scary because Australia is a prize. Australia is a hugely attractive place from a Chinese vantage point and not just as a vacation destination or a place to study and learn English. And I'm stunned by the lack of awareness of the strategic vulnerability of Australia. When everything should be screaming to you, prepare.